Hello, everyone. Yep, it's another week, and we are back at mainstream cryptos, getting ready to dive into another week of crypto news. Because we are creatures of habit, we are once again looking at the top 15 most important happenings in the crypto world that you need to know about to continue to invest properly and to stay hashtag Safu. Okay, are you ready? Let's get it. First up, number one. Let's hear it from CryptoBiz. Google is looking bullish on blockchain. At the intersection of tech and cryptocurrency news, the Google for Startups cloud program has expanded to include 11 blockchain firms. Together, the entities will provide grants, expertise, and services to emerging Web3 entrepreneurs. Meanwhile, the United Kingdom government has allocated $125 million in funding for a task force aimed at accelerating the country's AI readiness. The task force will focus on ensuring sovereign capabilities such as public services and fostering the adoption of safe and reliable AI foundation models. As part of the new cloud program, pre-seed Web3 startups can receive up to $2,000 in Google Cloud credits valid for two years while seeded startups can access $200,000 over two years for Google Cloud and Firebase usage. Additionally, blockchain partners are offering grants of up to $3 million to seeded companies in the Google for Startups Cloud program. Nansen will also use its database of over 250 million wallet labels to provide startups with real-time intelligence. Number two. This was already mentioned, but very significant, I think, in terms of future developments. The UK pledges nearly $125 million to create Safe AI Task Force. The UK government has announced that it is providing £100 million in initial funding to support a task force aimed at accelerating the country's readiness for AI. The task force is aimed at ensuring sovereign capabilities, which include public services, and fostering the adoption of safe and reliable foundation models. This coincides with the UK's commitment to become a science and technology superpower by 2030. The task force is expected to launch its first pilots of AI usage and integration targeting public services in the next six months. The UK is also pushing for safe AI which aims to regulate technology to keep people safe without limiting innovation. If you pardon me for saying so, looking at the way things are going at the moment, that seems pretty idealistic. Don't get me wrong, of course we have to regulate technology to keep people safe, um, to use their words. But petty concerns and efforts that AI might cause some damage, while they are well-founded, is not going to protect the world from any negative consequences of AI. Much bigger steps have to be taken. And that is the whole issue with the AI revolution, how to balance progress with human rights and safety. And there are all these ethical issues that come to light as a result of this. And so what we really need is not just some pathetic protocols, but global communities and organizations really dedicated to examining the ethical issues that come to light with uh, the use of the expanding use of AI and the willingness of world powers to listen and be willing to implement strong, possibly even harsh policies in order to combat the negative impact that AI will have on people's lives. In any case, feel free to give us your own thoughts on that in the comment section down below. For now, we're moving on to our third piece of news for this week. Binance US backs out of a $1 billion Voyager asset purchase and blames regulatory environment. Binance US has backed out of its agreement to purchase bankrupt cryptocurrency brokerage Voyager Digital's assets for $1 billion. The exchange blamed the move on the hostile and uncertain regulatory climate in the US. The Voyager Official Committee of Unsecured Creditors tweeted its disappointment at the news and said it was investigating potential claims against Binance US. Voyager and the Creditors Committee have said they would now work on distributing cash and crypto to customers directly via the Voyager platform. Voyager declared bankruptcy in July 2021. Moving on to number four. Binance Launchpad faces sudden large traffic as the EDU token sale goes live. Chinese crypto blogger and journalist Colin Wu tweeted that the initial exchange offering on Binance Launchpad for the Open Campus blockchain project kicked off. 
As the token sale started, Wu believes that the Binance Launchpad experienced sudden large traffic as a massive number of those wishing to buy EDU came over. This resulted in some users failing to see their funds displayed after they had transferred them. Earlier, you today reported that the chief of the Binance Exchange, CZ, or Shang Penzhao, proudly announced the upcoming release of the EDU token on the launchpad. He reminded the community that the sale would be conducted in a subscription format as usual, using a screenshot of users' BNB balances taken within five days, between April the 23rd and April the 28th. The excitement generated by that definitely contributed to the traffic, I would say. One, two, three, four, five. MasterCard plans to team up with crypto firms for card payment options. According to Reuters, the global payment giant MasterCard hopes to expand its cryptocurrency payment card program by seeking more partnerships with crypto firms. We have dozens of partners around the world who offer crypto card programs, and they continue to expand, says Raj de Modaran. MasterCard's head of crypto and blockchain. MasterCard has already partnered with crypto exchanges, including Binance, Nexo, and Gemini, to offer cryptocurrency-linked payment cards in select nations. Last year, MasterCard and Binance Crypto Exchange teamed up to launch prepaid cards in Latin American countries. In March, Binance announced the launch of its prepaid card in Colombia, the third country in Latin America to support the product following its debut in Argentina last year and Brazil in January. Piece of news number six is actually a very happy piece of news. PayPal's Venmo adds crypto transfers. Payments behemoth PayPal is expanding its cryptocurrency services for Venmo users, introducing a new feature that allows customers to transfer cryptocurrencies. Venmo, a mobile payment service owned by PayPal, has become a popular platform for peer-to-peer -peer transactions, and this new feature aims to provide users with more flexibility in managing their digital assets. Transferring cryptocurrencies on Venmo will be a straightforward process, thank goodness. Users can navigate to the crypto tab within the Venmo app, view their coin balances, and choose to send crypto to another Venmo account or an external wallet by entering the recipient's wallet address. Customers can also display their unique crypto address QR code to receive digital assets from others. However, users should be aware that crypto transfers cannot be cancelled or reversed and must ensure that the recipient's details are correct by verifying the destination address. So watch out for that. Number seven. We finally get to find out when Binance Japan will officially launch. The world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, aims to begin operating on the Japanese market after June this year. This will mark the company's return to the land of the rising sun after leaving in 2018 due to regulatory issues. Sakura Exchange Bitcoin announced that Binance Japan will start providing services and products to local customers after June 2023. The crypto giant acquired SEVC in November last year for an undisclosed sum to strengthen its presence in the region. Sakura an exchange directly regulated by the country's financial services agency, will cease all existing services after the 31st of May until the opening of Binance Japan. It advised users to withdraw their holdings ahead of the deadline. Those who do not do so will have their assets converted to Japanese yen based on the rate as of June the 5th. Customers willing to join Binance Japan will have to reapply for account opening and pass the necessary verification requirements. Ready for a look at number eight, and this is particularly significant for U.S. developments. The president will likely sign crypto legislation within 12 months. Crypto, re crypto supportive Republican policymakers Patrick McHenry and Cynthia Lummis provided the latest updates on digital asset legislation at Consensus 2023, and they are highly optimistic. The former believes President Biden will have signed the first bill into law directly forming rules around cryptocurrency within the next 12 months. During their panel discussion on Friday, Lummis began by clarifying that the next installment of her digital asset regulation bill, the Responsible Financial Innovation Act, will be presented before the Senate within the next six to eight weeks. The legislation, co-authored alongside fellow Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, is designed to bring regulatory clarity across many areas of the digital asset industry, including the classification of cryptocurrencies as either securities or commodities. 
clarity on that topic is desperately needed, as I'm sure you know. Unlike its first draft, published in June, however, this bill will include strengthened sections pertaining to protecting national security and tackling cybercrime. Pertaining to the House, McHenry, who serves as the chairman of the House Financial Service Committee, confirmed that the HFSC and Agricultural Committee will hold the first joint hearing on the market structure surrounding digital assets this May. Over the next two months, the group plans to produce a bill that creates a framework for digital assets to evolve from securities into commodities, and which creates room for some assets not to fit neatly into those categories. Lamas believes the House will likely move first in getting legislation through the Senate, due to the inability of the bill to pass on a partisan basis in her chamber. This, I quote, is a bipartisan subject that needs to be addressed before the 2024 election, she added. News item number nine. Dimension launches an IBC-enabled EVM roll-up on Testnet to enhance Cosmos ecosystem. Dimension has raised around $7 million in a private round earlier this year. The blockchain scaling startup Dimension announced the launch of the world's first IBC-enabled EVM roll-up on Testnet in collaboration with Evnos Core Teams and Celestia. The latest offering is part of Dimension's roadmap to establish and bootstrap a new ecosystem of IBC-enabled roll-ups. The collaboration, on the other hand, will bring superior EVM blockchain access to the Cosmos ecosystem. According to the press release shared with Crypto Potato, the first EVM roll app is being deployed within the platform's initial testing ground, called 35C. It was launched through a collaboration with Evmos core development team, as the roll app uses Ethermint, which happens to be an implementation of the Ethereum virtual machine built on top of Dimension's roll app. The new EVM rollup leverages the EVMOS token as its gas token. It is also tasked with updating its state to the Dimension Hub and posting data to Celestia's Mocha testnet. Commenting on the release, Yishe Harrell, Dimension Lab CEO and co-founder, said, We are excited to have worked closely with the EVMOS team to achieve this milestone. With the world's first IBC-enabled EVM rollup now deployed on testnet, we are one step closer to bringing scalable and interoperable blockchain solutions to the wider community. This is just the beginning of our journey, and we are looking forward to continuing to push the boundaries of what's possible with EVM-based technology. Number 10. Polygon announces Polygon Bridge for its zero-knowledge rollup. Polygon announced that Polygon Bridge is now available for Polygon zero-knowledge EVM. The development comes a month after the launch of the Zero Knowledge Rollup on Mainnet Beta. Polygon Zero Knowledge EVM. According to the official blog post, Polygon Bridge for the ZK EVM will feature several improvements that incorporate feedback received from the community and include a more visible progress bar, transaction history, and recent transaction panel with color coded completion status, time estimates for pending transactions, and the ability to filter. Polygon Bridge for ZK EVM is powered by zero-knowledge technology, meaning they are governed entirely by smart contracts, one on Ethereum and one on Polygon zero-knowledge EVM. Moreover, users will be able to withdraw funds from the Ethereum mainnet within 30 to 60 minutes. It will also support ERC-20 tokens and the extended features of ERC-777 tokens. The launch of Polygon Zero Knowledge EVM eliminates the mapping requirement, a process that can take hours or even days. As such, the token being bridged will automatically be mapped once a user triggers the bridging transactions. This is being touted as a major UX improvement compared to other chains, which requires users to map tokens before bridging. Let's take a look at our 11th piece of news. Guess what? Crypto.com and Samsung plan to offer optimized crypto trading experience on Z Fold devices. Popular digital asset trading platform Crypto.com has partnered with technology giant Samsung to offer an optimized version of its app for Samsung Galaxy Z Fold devices, including the recently launched Z Fold 4. In a statement released Thursday, Crypto.com announced the new update, version 3.1581, which features an enhanced trading and analysis experience specifically for Galaxy Z Fold devices. The new feature will allow users to compare a range of tokens simultaneously and more efficiently than on any other mobile device. 
This latest development makes Crypto.com the first digital asset platform to offer a tailored experience for Galaxy Z Fold devices. Good for them. Number 12. Let's take a look at Cardano's strides toward the future, IOG's progress and impressive network statistics. The last update on Cardano's network statistics is out, highlighting positive progress made by the platform. In core technology, the team working on the Conway Ledger era development has managed to integrate support for Plutus 3, a significant step forward. Additionally, they've been tweaking delegation certificates, introducing some governance ledger states, and making small but significant improvements to the ledger API. On the wallet and service front, the Day Dallas team has navigated API issues to remove Catalyst Fund information from the wallet and is working on a solution that allows users to fetch the ADA price independently of the CoinGecko API. In scaling, the Hydra team is ensuring state machine continuity on-chain and preparing for a release. The Mithril team, on the other hand, is in the process of developing a new certifier service and implementing interfaces for a new type of data. The report unveiled a striking infographic that captured the ecosystem's remarkable growth and achievements. You can see that down below. The platform has seen the launch of 126 projects, the creation of over 8.18 million native tokens, and 7,822 Pluto scripts in action. On to number 13. Over 70% of investors in Shiba Inu and Dogecoin rival Floki are underwater. Data from the blockchain shows that a significant majority of investors that purchase Dogecoin and Shiba Inu rival meme coin Floki are currently underwater, meaning they are sitting on unrealized losses. According to data from on-chain analytics firm Into the Block, a mere 19% of Floki holders possess a profitable position at the token's existing valuation. Among those who acquired the asset, 12% stand at a break-even point, while a staggering 70% are confronted with losses. The Floki team contends that the Binance listing substantiates the token's credibility, referring to the recent listing on Binance, as an asset, further solidifying its position alongside Doge and SHIB in the meme coin arena. Notably, the majority of SHIBA Inu investors are also grappling with losses. At SHIB's prevailing price of $0.00001, 68% of token buyers are operating at a loss, while only 3% and 28% are breaking even and reaping profits, respectively. In contrast, Dogecoin investors seem to fare better, with 54% of holders experiencing gains on their investments. A mere 4% and 43% of Doge investors are breaking even and incurring losses, respectively. The front runner in the meme coin space is valued at $0.079 at the time of writing. Nearing the end of our news for this week, let's look at number 14. Banks look bullish on crypto. Standard Chartered Zodia raises $36 million. After leading Zodia's Series A funding round, the Japanese financial conglomerate SBI Holdings became its second largest shareholder. Standard Chartered-backed crypto custody subsidiary Zodia Custody has raised $36 million in a new Series A funding round, Bloomberg reported on the 27th of April. Japanese financial conglomerate SBI Holdings has led the fundraise, becoming Zodia's second largest shareholder, Zodia Custody CEO Julian Sawyer reportedly said. Prior to the funding round, London headquartered Zodia was backed exclusively by Standard Chartered and Northern Trust, with Standard Chartered owning a 90% stake in the firm. It still remains the majority shareholder following the fundraise, according to Sawyer. With new funding, Standard Chartered's Zodia plans to increase the amount of supported cryptocurrencies, including staked Ethereum. Ethereum staking is a way to gain rewards for staking your assets. Following the recent changes to Ethereum protocol, we are seeing an increased client demand for these services, thus said Sawyer to Cointelegraph. And last but definitely not least, number 15 for this week. As usual, we have one of the most controversial pieces of news. That's the one to end off with. Tencent Cloud is to reportedly offer a deepfake creation tool at $145 US dollars. 
Tencent Cloud Deepfake Creation Service can analyze and train itself on three-minute videos and 100 voice clips to produce a convincing deepfake video within 24 hours. If you're not sure what a deepfake video is, don't worry, we will explain that shortly. Tencent Cloud, the cloud services provider arm of Chinese tech giant Tencent, has launched a new digital human production platform allowing users to create deepfakes of any individual. Tencent Cloud's deepfake generator uses Tencent's in-house artificial intelligence capabilities to recreate fake videos of an individual. Scammers have widely adopted deepfake videos to mislead investors by impersonating prominent figures. Last year, Tesla CEO Elon Musk warned against the rising number of deepfakes impersonating him to promote cryptocurrency scams. The deepfake creation service costs roughly 1,000 yuan or $145. Here you can see the difference between actual footage and deepfake footage created by AI. News media outlet The Register reportedly confirmed the development with Tencent and highlighted that the service could develop deepfakes in Chinese and English. The creation of digital humans is offered in five styles. 3D realistic, 3D semi-realistic, 3D cartoon, 2D real person, and 2D cartoon. Tencent intends to use the service for hosting live-streamed infomercials for the Chinese demographic. Jimian's report reveals that other applications of deepfakes may include representing doctors, lawyers, and other professionals. Now that is scary. I don't know where this is going to go, but it definitely has potential for doing some terrifying things. And that brings us to the end of this week's news. Thank you for stopping by Mainstream Cryptos. Please consider joining us on a weekly basis for more crypto news updates and tons of other amazing content designed to help you invest wisely and to be properly informed. I'm Abby from Mainstream Cryptos. If you would like to be updated regarding these news releases, just subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. It's as simple as that. With that, have a great week, and I hope I will be seeing you next time. Adios.